I'm excited to share a giveaway with Closet as a thank you for your continued support. Stay tuned. Post-pandemic, the average household pays for at least four of the major streaming services, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Apple TV, or Max. Add in LGBT-owned streaming platforms like WoW Presents Plus and Out TV, we spend a considerable amount of money per month for streaming. Tubi is an alternative to the major streaming platforms. It is a free ad-supported streaming service owned by Fox. As of September of this year, Tubi reached 74 million monthly active users. It is available in the US, Mexico, Canada, Australia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, El Salvador, Guatemala, India, and Panama, and will be expanding to other countries very soon. I wanted to highlight the best gay films that are available via Tubi. Let me know in the comment section what movies you plan to watch and which movies you learned about for the first time. This video is sponsored by Closet. I partnered with Closet, an LGBT plus adult toy company for a giveaway. Closet promotes self-love and accepting yourself wherever you are in your journey. Together, we're holding a massive giveaway. Closet will send out adult toys as well as gift cards to everyone, yes, everyone, who signs up for the giveaway. You should check out their best sellers like the Prostate Pro, a vibrating massager with a wireless remote control. It has a decent size that stimulates the prostate. The shaft is ribbed for additional sensation. The Prostate Pro is rechargeable and comes with a cable. It is non-porous, waterproof, and made of silicone. So cleanup is easy. To enter the giveaway, go to the giveaway link, which is on the screen and also in the pinned comment. And everyone who signs up for the giveaway wins something. Another thing that you'll love is that Closet offers discreet worldwide shipping. So unparalleled pleasure is only a click away no matter where you live in the world. Now, stay tuned. The Swimmer is a sports drama which I previously featured last year. It is a polarizing film. Some people say it isn't a gay film, but I'll let you decide. The main character, a talented swimmer, competes for a spot on the Israeli Olympic team at a training camp. However, only one spot is available on the team. When a new competitor arrives, his focus shifts in a new direction and an unacknowledged desire awakens inside of him. When the coach sees the connection between them, he forbids them from hanging out. The main character is damaged and struggles with identity issues. A usual plot line in gay coming of age stories, there is a lot of nudity and focus on the male body. What you see in many gay coming of age stories as well. But the ending is unpredictable. The swimmer is well crafted and seizes you with a magnetic pull. If you enjoy sports dramas or coming of age stories, then you might enjoy The Swimmer. The Swimmer premiered at the 2021 Jerusalem Film Festival and at the festival won in the Best Actor category. On Rotten Tomatoes, The Swimmer has a 92% rating. Beautiful Something is a romantic drama set in Philadelphia. The movie follows four men, Brian, Jim, Drew, and Bob on one night. Brian, a tortured poet, seeks more than a quick grinder hookup, but when he meets guys, the romantic encounters fail utterly. Coleman Domingo plays Drew, an accomplished metal sculptor in his 40s, obsessed with the beauty of his younger lover slash muse, Jim. Jim, a childish actor living with Drew, detests his boyfriend's devotion to his work. Bob is an alcoholic talent agent in his 60s who leads a double life and cruises around the city while in a limousine. Even though they are extremely different, they have one thing in common. They are desperate for connection. The film premiered at the 2015 Miami Gay and Lesbian Film Festival and Best Actor went to the ensemble cast at the Chicago Gay and Lesbian International Film Festival. This honor was the first in its 30 year plus history. On Rotten Tomatoes, Beautiful Something has a 50% rating, but mostly from straight people. Watch it purely for Coleman Domingo's performance. I featured Mignon last year as well. The film is a coming-of-age drama set in Brooklyn in the 80s that follows David, a 17-year-old with strict Russian-Jewish parents. When David's grandfather downsizes to a smaller apartment, he moves in with him. 
Away from his father who beats him and his overbearing mother, he can explore his sexuality. In one scene, the manager of his grandfather's building says, thieves, adulterers, homosexuals, I take them all. Without them, we would never have our minyan. Minyan refers to the quorum of 10 Jewish adults required for certain religious ceremonies. It is a commentary on the role of the LGBT community in society. I will let you decide what that is. The film premiered at the 2020 Berlin International Film Festival. At the 2020 Outfest Film Festival, the film won Outstanding U.S. Narrative Feature Film. And at the Jerusalem Film Festival, it won Best First Feature in the same year. On Rotten Tomatoes, Mignon has a 93% rating. Monsoon is a romantic drama set in Saigon following Kit, a man from the UK born in Vietnam, who returns for the first time in over 30 years after leaving during the end of the Vietnam War. Kit is unanchored and lost in a city that resembles nothing like the city of his childhood. Early on, we see a beautiful aerial shot of traffic overflowing with scooters and cars. The sound of traffic follows Kit everywhere. The congestion becomes symbolic of the difficulty of his journey. He hopes to reconnect with an unfamiliar culture. One of his parents has died and he has to scatter their ashes in the city. While wondering, he questions whether it is possible to reconnect with the past. Henry Golding plays Kit. He is probably most known for Crazy Rich Asians. The film premiered in 2019 at a film festival in the Czech Republic and it won the 2014 Sundance Institute Global Filmmaking Award. Monsoon is dreamy, romantic, and nostalgic with several moments of pause. But most of my friends hate this film. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has an 87% rating. I featured All of Our Fears a few months ago. All of Our Fears is a drama out of Poland following Daniel, a young artist and gay activist who is a devout Catholic. Everyday life in his quiet village is disrupted by an unimaginable act that he is blamed for. To free himself from this blame and shed light on the struggle between light and darkness, he throws himself into his art practice. His art is also an act of rebellion. All of Our Fears is based on the real life experiences of a gay activist who is considered to be one of the most outstanding visual artists of his generation. His exhibition, Fears, inspired the movie and the village where the incident occurred has less than a thousand people. The film premiered at one of the most prestigious film festivals in Poland in 2021 and won five awards, including the main prize. It does not have a rating on Rotten Tomatoes. Breaking Fast is a gay rom-com set in West Hollywood. Mo, played by Ha Slayman, is a practicing Muslim learning to navigate life after a breakup. Cal, an all-American guy, surprises him by offering to break fast with him during the holy month of Ramadan. The writer who also directed it wrote Breaking Fast as a short film in 2015, then turned it into a feature film in 2020. The film premiered at a film festival in Brazil in 2020 and won 11 awards across the film festival circuit. On Rotten Tomatoes, Breaking Fast has a 96% rating. Cicada is a romantic drama set in 2013 in Brooklyn. The film follows Ben, who is bisexual and newly out. He meets Sam, a reserved man who struggles with his identity and public masculinity. They try to bridge an emotional distance complicated by trauma, race, and the struggle for self-acceptance. The film views love as an act of courage and healing. Matthew Pfeiffer, who plays Ben, co-wrote, produced, and co-directed the film. Sheldon Brown, who plays Sam, wrote the film with Sam. The film premiered at the 2020 Out On Screen Vancouver Queer Film Festival and won 11 awards across the film festival circuit, including honorable mention in the U.S. Narrative Feature category at New Fest, New York's LGBT Film Festival. Cicada has a 95% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. In the comments section, let me know which projects you learned about for the first time and which projects you plan to watch or which projects you plan to rewatch now that they're on Tubi. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please follow me on Instagram at writervicyates for more information about my art and literary projects. And I also started a TikTok account. You can follow me there also at writervicyates as well. I appreciate your support. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel and become a member if you can and like and share this video. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, have a lovely day. Besos. Mwah.